Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on our Identified Flying Objects show. This is the show where we show you the real life footage of UFOs as captured by our cameras and provide detailed analysis of the footage and the crafts. Here in Farsight we do scientific remote viewing and we'll be using the same approach, using science to analyze and determine what it is exactly that is captured by our cameras. Our goal is to explore what is happening within our solar system and on our planet. Now, we've all seen the famous gimbal video. We have numerous pilots coming out with statements of seeing various crafts. Even with all the proof, as far as the government goes, there is no meaningful acknowledgement of these crafts visiting our planet. It's clear that this is the time to not only provide concrete proof of these UFOs, but to put the ability to do so in your hands. Disclosure is on our doorstep, and we can't wait for the powers to be to make the first step. So, here we are. Now, let me introduce our technical expert. Lincoln Lounsbury has been in the field of aviation for 35 years. He is a retired FAA traffic controller and expert sky watcher. He has written articles on ATC safety issues for aviation trade journals and has been a contractor to the FAA working as an air traffic control subject matter expert. All right, welcome Lincoln. So could you tell us a little bit more about your background and exactly how it translates in identifying UFOs? Yeah, sure. Um, um, my experience as an air traffic controller is uh, all from working in control towers. Uh, often when people think about the air traffic controller, they picture them in a control tower, looking up in the sky, or possibly in a radar room, you know, looking at radar. Um, my experience is all in a tower, although we also had radar in the tower. Um, the, probably the most important thing, in, um, really helpful for identifying UFOs, anything in the sky, is the experience you gain when you look up in the sky and see a plane and then you look back at your radar scope and you correlate its location to the radar and when you do that and find the plane on the radar you also get to see all the uh, additional identifying information so you can see the call sign of the uh, aircraft flight number the type of the aircraft their altitude their speed a whole host of information and then, you know, when you look back at the plane, you get to see that in the sky and you can say, ah, you know, that's what 3000 feet looks like. That's what 250 knots looks like the speed. A um, you know, lot of information, a lot of experience gained so that when you're not in the control tower and you're out in the field or I'm analyzing video, I have a lot of experience just looking without the radar and really you know, getting a, a much better idea what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm, I've been in aviation for 35 years, uh, worked in control towers, three different control towers. Started out at Reed Hillview Airport, San Jose, California, worked in VFR Tower. Uh, just a whole lot of fun working there for several years. And then moved on to Oakland International Airport, a uh, whole, new, whole new game, uh, different runways, different types of aircraft, different mixes of aircraft, you know, everything from the Goodyear blimp to uh, high performance sports aircraft, high performance jets, military, helicopters, glider, I mean, just the whole realm, just got to see it all there. And then um, finished up at Washington National Airport here in Washington, DC, um, and where I live today. Um, after I finished with air traffic control, I wrote a little bit for uh, some aviation trade journals. I wrote about uh, safety issues, and then went on to become a, a consultant to FAA contractor, air traffic control expert for them on a couple different issues we work on. So as an air traffic controller that's worked in Washington, D.C. for years, um, that's pretty tough airspace. And so you, you're, uh, what you've been recording uh, is not sort of the stuff you were expecting, I guess, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I started out doing um, UFO, you know, trying to see if I could even find anything in the sky. I've been watching online. People say, well, what you really need to do is take some video just of the blank sky and slow it down and see what you can see. And of course, first thing I'm thinking, geez, Washington, D.C., this is the most highly restricted airspace in the country. Um, very restricted, you know, inside 15 miles. It's just airplanes landing and taking off from Washington National Airport few military helicopters from the Pentagon and a couple medevac helicopters. That's all the traffic. There aren't any uh, VFR 
uh, private aircraft or IFR private aircraft, not even IFR, uh, some technical terms there, but there's just no private aircraft at all flying through this airspace. It's uh, just pro it's just uh, that restricted. So yeah, the chances that I could uh, even capture something, I'm, I'm, you know, I was thinking were pretty slim. And then I, of course, went on to uh, film some spectacular UFOs that I actually saw with my bare eyes as well. So very exciting start here in you know, Arlington, Virginia, highly restricted airspace. So I should mention, um, Lincoln did discover how to shoot the UFOs. So he started experimenting on his end. And when he sent me the initial videos of these UFOs, uh, I have to say it was really, really very impressive what you did capture with your UFOs, especially considering the controlled airspace that you're shooting in. Uh, what was, how did you go about shooting these and what was your experience when you saw, when you first were like, wow, this is what I have, because I was amazed. <clears throat> yeah, really great. Um, yeah, I started um, a couple different things. One, I w really wanted to look into the infrared spectrum to see what I could find. I didn't have any high-end infrared cameras, but I sort of did this makeshift lens that I created. I took these glasses you get at the movie theater for scene 3D. They have the red and the blue lens and I sort of cut them in half and put them on top of each other. It becomes a purple and I put those right over top of my camera lens on my cell phone and it sort of sealed underneath so that no extra light can get in underneath and just started shooting the blank sky. And I was going to slow it all down and take a look and I could not believe what I captured on film. Just incredible. Um, you know, we can get more into it. I, was, I had measured a cloud layer, I think at 4,500 feet, and this UFO is 1,293 feet long, flew over this cloud. And knowing that, um, you can see it was above the cloud, it was aimed straight up in the sky. And knowing the base of the cloud height, 4,500 feet, I could uh, calculate, and the focal length of the lens of the camera, there's some simple tri trigonometry that you can calculate how wide the field of view is, and from there, speed of the aircraft, um, minimum altitude, minimum speed. And this thing, 1,293 feet long, was going somewhere around 9,000 to 13,000 miles an hour. And just confirmed, just confirmed, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. So, looking at this particular video that we have here, could you tell me, what is it that you see and how how would you go about analyzing? And um, please tell us your first impressions when you saw this video. 